Okay, folks, coming up on the Chris Salcedo Show, the great Rush Limbaugh, an early look at his program. That comes your way at 1045. But first, let me get to our guest this morning. Senator Pat Fallon has served in the Texas Senate, representing the District 30 of in North Texas. But he has won the Republican nomination for Congress, District 4, beating out 20 other candidates in the first ballot. Senator, welcome back to the Chris Salcedo Show. Chris, it is an honor to be with you. All right. Uh, let's talk about, first off, congratulations on, on your big win. Uh, you. My understanding of it is Senator Cruz uh, had breakfast with you, endorsed you that morning of the vote, right? Yeah, you know, that says a lot about who he is. You know, he's got precious little family time, and he decided that he was going to fly to Sulphur Springs, Texas, the morning of August 8th, and have two different sittings of brunch with the delegates that were going to decide, roughly 150, and about half uh, showed up for the brunch. Well, that was cool of him to do. You're absolutely right. Uh, did you watch any of the DNC last night? No, I didn't because I wanted to come on your show with a <laughs> clear mind. I didn't want to be vomitous. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, really? uh, see, I, I, I showed up in a bad mood today because uh, uh, because I <laughs> I had to watch it so nobody else had to. Uh, your take on the current state of of your political opposition, the Democrat socialists. You know, Chris, I was talking to you. Remember that great Central Texas conservative, Shelby Slauson, that beat uh, Sheffield? I remember. The most liberal. Yeah, and she crushed him 23 points. Um she, came, she called me a couple of days ago and had a really good idea for a bill in Texas next session because, you know, hopefully I'll be in D.C. But she was going to file a bill that said if a city like Austin, for instance, wanted to defund their police department. I, I'm in Austin right now, and I, I do want to talk to you about it's like a war zone, and it's like Austin lost. But, you know, they, they have 34% reduction in their police uh, and their police force, $150 million reduction. She has a bill that will say, oh, while you want to do that city, go ahead. We're then going to compel you to take that $150 million and give it directly to the state because the state's going to have to come in and babysit them with DPS because there's going to be untold misery, loss of life. Those city council members should be ashamed. They, those votes cost lives. People will die because of their insane and dangerous socialist folly. Well, uh, one of their... I love that idea of the bill. Oh, no, that's a great idea for a bill. I, I am all for that. But, you know, one of their city councilmen said, we won celebrating $150 million being cut from the Austin Police Department. And we means the Antifa thugs, the Black Lives Matter thugs who were who are beating people up, who are vandalizing, looting, and killing uh, since the death of George Floyd. Yeah, I, I came down to Austin because I specifically wanted to see the state of the city right now. And it is, the businesses are boarded up downtown. There is There are homeless people everywhere. And I really do feel, in, in, in a, you know, with a Christian heart, for those homeless that are mentally ill and that's that's just tough and that's a tragedy there are many that by just a series of very bad life decisions over the course of decades are homeless and it's drug dependency mainly yeah. but they are everywhere and there are tents everywhere it looks like a third world country this is disgusting austin yeah. should be and they're going to then take out a third of the police force it's insane well that's that that's the democrat vision for the entirety of america if you look at portland seattle now austin new york chicago their war zones and and los angeles hell that they had uh they had trash piled a mile high in los angeles because uh democrats are too busy greasing their own palms with taxpayer dollars senator pat fallon our guest right now folks he is uh, going up against a Democrat. I don't even know who it is. It really doesn't matter. Uh, to be the the Republican representing District Four in Congress as a as a congressman. So so you you see all of these cities melting down. And I made this point on the on the national show on Newsmax yesterday. You see all the chaos, but then you've got this this community of Mesquite, Nevada, that changed all of its lights to blue to stand in solidarity with police officers. There were one or two houses that didn't do it, but I think that's indicative of America. The vast majority of Americans back our police. It's the de the, the very small minority of these radical leftists in the Democrat Party who don't. Am I wrong? <clears throat> well, you know, it reminds me a lot of when, when we, were, we weren't we were born yet, um, 1968. And what we learned about, all, you know, when the, the, the riots, and Humphrey, you know, the Democrats were going to win, and then Nixon came in because people really do want law and order. Mm -hmm. And if you're, the bottom line is, if you're not safe, you're not, if you're not safe, then you're not free, and you're being denied your constitutional rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Flat out, that's what it is. 
And I think a lot of the people in the suburbs, I mean, I think Trump's going to win Minnesota. If they keep rioting and keep uh, destabilizing Minneapolis, don't you think those good people up there are going to have it? And who hurts? Who did they hurt the most? Who did Austin just hurt the most? They hurt people of color, mm-hmm. poor folks, where the you know crime is unfortunately concentrated in areas that um, are you know economically uh, struggling. You know what I think is behind and, that? You know what I think is behind that? Remember back in uh, February, March, the polls came through three of them. 33, 34, 33. That was support of the black community for President Donald Trump. That's when all this meltdown started. And then the latest Rasmussen poll just a week ago said that the support in the black community for Trump didn't decrease. It actually went up to 36 percent. And I think that this was the Democrats way of lashing out at minorities for daring to wander off the the socialist plantation. Uh, What do you think about that theory? Well, they have to do something because, you know, if they don't think about the Democratic Party. If the Republicans were to receive even just 15 or 20 percent of the African-American vote across the country, we wouldn't have a Democrat elected in our lifetime nationally. Yeah, that's how dependent the Democrats are. And they give the African-American community nothing other than they've been taking them for granted for decades. And there are just I'm talking tens of millions of great folks. You know how it is in any Jeffersonian democracy. Roughly 40 percent of the population leans right, 40 percent leans left, and there's 20 percent in the middle. So there's no possible way that the African-American community, almost 50 million strong in this country, is 92% liberal. It's just they're not. There are good conservative and independent uh, black Americans that are voting democratically for just cultural reasons. They're just That's what their parents did. That's what their grandparents did. We, I came from New England. Yeah. We saw that with, with folks up there. You know, the Irish, the Italian immigrants, they just voted democratic because that's what they've always done. They don't do it so much anymore. Right. I, and I, and I call I, it I'm the, praying that that's the case. Yeah. I, I call it the Great Black Awakening. And there's, I'm hoping that she makes it. Uh, when you get up to Capitol Hill, you can look up this this lady. It's on the Chris Alcedo Show Facebook page. It's Kimberly Cla- uh, Classic, uh, K L A C I K. She's running for Congress. Oh, she's a gal. She's a gal in Baltimore. Baltimore, yes, in Baltimore. Yeah. And she, she's a black lady. She's strutting around Baltimore, saying, "Hey, look at what Democrats did." Uh, over all these decades, and she's saying, I-, I think black lives matter, but it's the Democrats who are making us live in this squalor, and she's 100% correct. Well, how about this? All black lives matter. They say, how about that? We own that. All black lives matter, particularly the ones in the inner city that are being butchered and murdered. Amen to that. That nobody talks about, that CNN doesn't talk about. If the right person doesn't pull the trigger, apparently that black life doesn't matter. Exactly. But if the right person that fits their narrative... Oh, it matters. You know, I was wondering when, back in 07, when that Duke lacrosse, you know, that rape case came, well, that alleged rape case, because it was a bunch of, of lies. Yeah, it was a lie. But I thought, why Why is this a national news story? Uh, that, uh, unfortunately, this woman, you know, was accusing some men of rape. And, oh, it was a national news story because you had a poor black victim and rich, wealthy, privileged white kids. Mm. But it wasn't, it didn't happen. It was all fiction, and it blew up in their face. But they rode that pony for a year. True. It's absolutely true. You know, there's one more thing I'm going to get to you, uh, 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 talk with you about. Senator Pat Fallon is our guest right now, folks. He is aspiring to be Congressman Pat Fallon to represent Congressional District 4 here in the great state of Texas. Um, the anti-American bug has has spread through professional sports, Major League Baseball, uh, National Football League, Major League Soccer, and th- the worst offender in my mind is the National Basketball Association, who not only... Uh, is spitting on the flag, but also shows love and affinity for the communist Chinese. So if if you would, if you would just comment on this cultural shift in pro sports to anti-Americanism in particular, as it, as it pertains to the flag. Yeah. Well, they've lost me entirely. I served in the military and uh, you know, we had friends that gave their lives for this country and to sit there and think that if the Chinese communists dominate, and our, uh, uh, you know, become the sole superpower in the world, and we become some vassal state to China, that that's going to, a darkness will descend over the entire globe. It's disgusting, and it's the almighty dollar. It's in vogue to be leftist now. Yeah, I know. Hey, Colin Kaepernick is making money. This guy hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in how long now? Five years, six years, <laughs> something like that? And he is making money from it. Uh-huh. They're getting rich. If They're not risking anything. It's risky to be a conservative. How about that one fellow in the NBA who refused to 
um, Neil. Oh, well, Why yeah. not? Well, his, his jersey, uh, I, I can't remember his name right now, but his jersey is now the second best-selling jersey in the, in the NBA because – so, so however many Patriots are left watching the National Basketball Association, uh, his jersey uh, spiked up there. It's so it's so rare to see a, a pro-American in professional sports. Senator Pat Fallon, everybody, he wants to be the next congressman from District 4 here in the great state of Texas. We wish you all the best of luck and stay in touch, will you? Chris, and know this, no matter what, how AOC votes, I cancel her out come January. <laughs> okay. I wonder if we could fit that on a bumper sticker. That'd be great. Uh, vote for Pat Fallon. Cancel AOC. Telephone number is uh, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. More from the DNC, more of your phone calls, and Rush Limbaugh, all in the last half hour of the South Salos Show here on the Big BAP.